I've titled today's conversation, What You Imagine Imagines You. Now, in this conversation, we're going to look at the idea of imagination, fourth dimensional self, as well as what we have been discussing, which is five sensory integration with the sixth sense. So the premise is based on two quotes from Neville Goddard. He states, As soon as man assumes the feeling of his wish fulfilled, his fourth dimensional self finds ways for the attainment of this end, discovers methods for its realization. It is the understanding that this outer world is both molded and interpreted from consciousness. And since we have the ability to interpret accurately what is within our consciousness, we have then the ability to mold ourselves to the destination. What is the destination? Well, if you go into your imagination, you can imagine just about any possibility. And it is said that the fourth dimensional self, which we'll talk about in a moment, which is otherwise known as the spiritual self, sees that all things or specifically put, knows that all things exist in the imagination. This fourth dimensional self also realizes that all things that exist in the imagination can be experienced in what we call reality, the outer world, the five sensory experience. And to further emphasize this, Neville also states, I know no clearer definition of this means by which we realize our desires than to experience in the imagination what we would experience in the flesh were we to achieve our goal. This imaginary experience of the end with acceptance wills the means. So what happens in between? Between imagining and the experience. Well, this is where we go into the world of our beliefs. We can put them in categories. We say empowering beliefs or disempowering beliefs, limiting beliefs. Now, in the last video, we talked about the importance of having empowering beliefs to facilitate you to a higher degree of faith. The truth is that if you just remain true to the assumption of the feeling of the wish fulfilled, then you would not need to go and uncover and change your beliefs. We call this faith. Now, to further discuss this, I recommend watching my last video, which is a good prerequisite for this conversation. But the idea and the premise of Neville's information is working with the power of faith. Faith is working with the fourth dimensional self. So, when we refer to the fourth dimensional self, or otherwise known as the spiritual self, and we ask ourselves, where does this natural and spiritual self exist? Well, the natural self, which is actually connected with the spiritual self, is more integrated with belief via the five senses. What we experience via our five senses is being interpreted within via the natural self, the physical self, and we can find the accurate interpretation in relation to our vision via the spiritual self. I call this the true inner voice conversation. Now he states, There are two outlooks on the world possessed by everyone, a natural focus and a spiritual focus. The ancient teachers call the one the carnal mind, and the other the mind of Christ. We may differentiate them as ordinary waking consciousness governed by our senses and a controlled imagination governed by desire. So we have a desire, and sometimes the five senses can be experienced as, from the interpretation, as denying the desire. When we recognize that the desires come from the spiritual self, we can accurately interpret what these desires mean and conjure up a scene in our imagination that is designed to bring forth the reality of what we truly want. We call this connection with the true self 
or highest version of ourself, or in this context, the fourth dimensional self. Now, when a person lives this way, a few things end up happening. Number one, they have a higher degree of faith and self-confidence. Number two, they'll feel more in harmony with the outer world, aligning the laws of creation, which is what we're talking about primarily with Neville's information, with the laws of nature, which is what we traditionally talk about in personal development information, which is integrating with the five sensory experience, all the things that you would have to do. Now, what you have to do is also found within. And how I came to this conclusion is based on my own experience, as well as working with many entrepreneurs on the journey. What I found is that, for whatever the reason may be, we live in a time where there's a lot of information. And when we go and consume this information, we can find even more nuanced distinction on this information. And what we can find as a result of consuming this information is a sense of overwhelm of the large volume of information and perhaps an inability to integrate what is relevant of the information to produce the results. When a person has a deeper connection with this based on understanding that there's an inner spiritual self and a natural self, we begin to become more of ourselves, so it's said, which is actually connecting back to our true inner self, which is the spiritual self. From there, we can intuitively, and as well as through conscious thinking, determine what information is relevant to our vision and what is not, what behaviors need to be integrated and what doesn't, what the accurate interpretation is as far as doing goes and what isn't. All of this still is guided from within via what Neville refers to as the spiritual focus. If we become too naturally focused and not identify with the spiritual focus, we find ourselves feeling limited by the possibility of what is possible in our imagination. We might say things like, it's just our imagination. Failing to realize that imagination is the source of and where we can select from all possibilities on how we choose to live. And we're always going to choose that which we desire. That's why he said, governed by our senses and a controlled imagination governed by desire. Now, Napoleon Hill refers to this as the burning desire. It's going to be easy to imagine. You've always been able to imagine it. If you look at this outer world experience, we recognize that we were imagining and bringing forth all the time. Only now with this information, we're choosing to consciously imagine that which we truly desire. So why is it then, based on what is being discussed here, do we not work with this information as consciously? Well, when we're born into this world, we are being fed a lot of information. And as mentioned, we're constantly being fed a lot more information. And it seems to be increasing, at least from my perspective, more so each day. However, I realize the importance of being able to embrace large volumes of complexity and to be able to what otherwise we refer to as finding the signal within the noise. So it's important to also distinguish and recognize that another person's noise can be another person's signal. Another person's signal can be another person's noise. And we're referring to information. And it's not to say that some information is greater than another. It's really about what is accurate and applicable and related to your vision. Now, belief, how we believe ourselves to be, how we believe reality to be, how we believe our relationships are with people, environment, circumstance, information, and everything in this outer world experience is going to determine our level of faith. And what we want is empowering beliefs, because as discussed in the last video, empowering beliefs help facilitate a higher degree of faith. So there are, you can say, two ways of having a higher degree of faith. Number one is to commit to something in your imagination, whatever it is that you desire. 
and work with this information to see it all the way till completion. And by working with this information, it is really about noting the things that show up from you within that are revealed as limiting beliefs, limiting perspectives, limiting ideas, limiting elements that we connect with and refer to as doubt. Watch the video I did two videos ago talking about the concept of doubt and how what we want to do is exclude doubt out of our consciousness or as much as you can so that we can remain faithful towards the vision. Now this is found through identifying how we interpret our experiences day to day on the journey and recognize that this outer world is playing out the theater. People are playing out the theater. Things are playing out theater based on our interpretations, our assumptions, our beliefs, our perspectives, our perception within. And we have the power to change this. And as mentioned, in earlier stages of our life, until this day, we're consuming large volumes of information each day. We have the ability to intercept the interpretation of this information. It may appear that the outer world is telling us what to do suggesting to us what to do. But the way we want to look at it from the perspective of faith and maintaining a higher degree of affirmation and conviction to the vision is that all of the information that is being presented is still a suggestion. And it always was because you have the power to believe what you want to believe. And you're always going to believe what is in harmony to the vision. And this is how you build a relationship between the five senses and the sixth sense. This is how you also develop inner peace and inner harmony. This is how you understand the concept further of the fourth dimensional self and the integration, as I refer to, five senses, which is your integration with this outer world, and the sixth sense, which represents your true self. And the friction in between is not caused by faith, because faith is loyalty to that vision, but rather the beliefs that we have about our experiences day to day. Now, as mentioned in previous videos and Neville discussions, he keeps this very simple and he says, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Now that is faith right there. No complexity, no convolution, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and it is done. So as simple as this seems, it really on one hand is actually that simple. However, it's our thinking that makes it more complex. So going back to this, I would mentioned, we've assimilated a lot of information that we have believed to be true about ourselves and others, which is not necessarily in alignment or in harmony with our vision. And we identify what this information is, and we change our beliefs, change our assumptions. And the way we do this is by recognizing that the way we consume this information and believed it to be true which we would call disempowering, can be changed by the same methodology, except more conscious, that we assimilated this information. The repetition of the same information, we call this affirmation or inner voice conversation that speaks of the same information from the perspective of empowerment, or the repetition of the same information from different perspectives. For example, if you have a mastermind, or a group of books that you read, or specific authors, or specific individuals that you want to incorporate their belief systems into your own consciousness, that say the same thing, but they speak of it from many different ways. But in essence, they're saying the same thing, which is the way we think and the way we interpret molds this particular experience that we have which we call journey to the destination. And every time you listen to it, you feel more connected to yourself. You feel clearer and more empowered by what information you are consuming. This is because the spiritual self, which is related to intuition, is guiding you to that information, which is causing you to further affirm that information which is bringing you from a flow-based perspective to your destination. Now, this also helps transcend and ascend past limiting beliefs. 
Another reason why it's important to stay committed all the way till you bring forth what you imagine. Staying committed. Because on the journey, if we experience doubt and reactivity, and we come up with interpretations of how the experiences that we're having is holding us back from creating the success, and we begin to identify it, we can go down the pathway of creating those experiences of what we are imagining, which is based on our interpretations of those experiences. When we recognize that we can choose something else to imagine, something that is more empowering, then we'll find ourselves going down that pathway towards the attainment. For example, one of my favorite things to do is to have conversations with people about their dreams and their vision. And my goal is not to convince them that they are wrong if they have limiting beliefs. It's to simply have a conversation from the fourth dimensional self, which is essentially seeing them as the person that already is the person that is in relation to their vision, their true self. And what I find is that the conversation molds into a person feeling that firm conviction, that firm affirmation, where it comes from that really matters. It is the authenticity of the truth that all things exist in the imagination and all possibilities exist in the imagination. And we have the ability to see the possibilities and what we can conjure up in our imagination in this experience as reality. So you can say that we cultivate a higher degree of faith in people. Now, this is not based on necessarily just having faith. This is also based on what has been supported, as mentioned before, in the previous video via belief or reference experience. I can look back in my own life and recognize how many times I was able to bring forth what was in my imagination, even if others weren't able to do it. And then those things became the norm, such as when I was a kid growing up, and during those days, people never saw the potentiality of this world that we live in, in which we're surrounded by technology. And whenever you use a computer, people would say, oh, you're just playing around on the computer. And they would not even see this potentiality that I once saw at the time. Because when I was playing around, so to speak, with the technology, I started to see the infinite applications and potentialities of a computer and how it could make people's lives easier. And I continued to stay down that pathway intuitively. And then eventually, computers started to become something that was available in every house. And many of us have many computers in a house. And not just a computer, as in a laptop or a personal computer, but cell phones or any other devices that have the same kind of technology, which a lot of times smaller are way more powerful than the technology on the big personal computers that were available back in those days. Now, if I allowed the opinions of others to sway what I already knew was true, I would not have gone into corporate IT at an early age, invested 10 years of my life in there, learned about technologies, business, infrastructure, really fascinating experience. And from there, built an IT business after I left corporate in 2009, up to 50 clients I was servicing at a time. And then from there, I went into the world of consulting and all these things. And everything made sense by following and understanding the concepts that we're talking about right here, which is connecting to my imagination and selecting what I imagine is true and seeing it all the way till completion. And all of us have the opportunity to do this. When I look back at those stages of my life, it appears that I was surrounded by people that denied the assumption. And now, when I look at reality, it seems to be saturated everywhere I go. And I took this about many different things that I brought forth, the entrepreneurial success, relationship success, friendship success, life experiences, traveling around and doing business. 
including things like, including a time when I remember when I was in corporate, where I would suggest to people the idea of telecommuting or working remotely. And many people at that time would say, ah, it's not possible because of this and because of that. Now, when we look around, we see many people are working remotely, working from remote destinations around the world, running their business, working for corporations, doing their job, and it's a normal occurrence. At one point, it was considered an impossibility, all because of staying true to the assumption that, as stated here, all things already exist, and thus creation is already finished. Now, this removes a lot of anxiety, because what is in imagination has the potentiality, should we choose to, exist in this outer world experience as reality and brought forth. Faith brings us into awareness of how it is so, and faith works with the unconscious, the subconscious mind, in ways that we do not consciously know how it's going to be brought forth. A lot of times, it will be brought forth. All we got to do is maintain true to that assumption. So what we do in Neville's process is we select in our imagination that which we desire, assume it to be done, and then recognize that this outer world is rearranging to reflect that vision. And during that time, we can encounter what we would call limiting beliefs that we've learned through the accumulation of beliefs without questioning the beliefs and disengage from the ones that are not in alignment and engage in the ones that are in alignment to further facilitate faith. It is not required to uncover limiting beliefs and change beliefs around. It is actually just required to remain faithful to the assumption. But one of the things that can help us on the journey is uncovering these limiting beliefs and changing them. That way, we experience less doubt, less convolution, less frustration, less resistance between where we are right now and the destination, which is what we have seen in our imagination. Now, to select in our imagination, it's a simple process. What would it look like if it was true? Can you imagine yourself already at the end result of fulfillment of what you imagine will happen after you've achieved that success? One of the things that I mentioned this, I believe, in one of my previous videos that I used to imagine was teaching others, sharing this information after I worked with it and produced the results in the entrepreneurial space. So yes, I would imagine myself with certain amount of income, certain amount of end result, you could say material possessions or experiences as a result of creating entrepreneurial success or career success. But I would also imagine every now and then, which was even more compelling to me, sharing this information with others. Now that really was me selecting that scene in the imagination because I felt so connected with that scene. And then when I reflect now, this is exactly what I'm doing a lot of the time. I'm sharing this information via this channel, via consulting, via connecting with others, because I love to discuss and share this information and also learn at the same time. Now, again, I'm going to emphasize the importance of releasing from doubt. And Neville stated in one of his lectures, he said, read the paper and react. This reaction sets a feeling in motion be it anger, frustration, or irritation. When the feeling leaves, where does it go? Back to sleep within you, for you contain the world and all that is in it. So the idea behind it is doubt, indecision, anger, frustration in relation to your vision. When we entertain that kind of experience, we're re-impressing it on the subconscious mind, and we're recreating it again, again, and again. And it is our interpretation and our beliefs that is associating the meaning of anger and frustration and irritation to what shows up on the journey to the fulfillment of our vision. And we have the power to change these interpretations. Watch the video I did on the four modalities. I'll put a link in the description in which I discuss how you can do it. These were the only ways that I've ever worked with, starting with how I learned to do this by reading Thinking Grow Rich back in 2004, in which he talked about the concept of auto-suggestion. And from there, I started to add my own ways, but it was really based on experience, 
building on the same foundation, which essentially goes back to the same two points that I mentioned earlier. Repetition of the same information or repetition of the same information from different perspectives. And it doesn't necessarily have to be conversation or books or trainings that share that information. We're also talking about life experience, which is a natural way that we are impressing the subconscious through life experience. Consciously selecting life experience that further affirms the vision. And he stated, another important word to watch is if. The conscious mind is very subtle in expressing doubt. We may be able to keep our minds focused on what we want by using positive I statements. If we are not careful, we may let if sneak in without recognizing its implication. So essentially what we're doing here is outwitting doubt, which I talked about in the last Sunday's video, which I'll put a link in the description. I recommend you watch it. And we can say I am to that vision. And we're saying I am to things every single day. That is how we are affirming and expressing it, re-expressing into reality. Even if we're not consciously understanding how we're saying I am to the different experiences, it's what we identify with and what we interpret as how those interactions with the five sensory experience imply to us in our imagination. What it implies is what we are imagining and saying I am too. Now, if is the doubts as he referred to. As in, I see my vision in full presence in my imagination as already done. Then you go about your day-to-day -day and doubts start to pop up in your mind. But what if this and what if that? And if this doesn't work, that's going to happen. And you start to maybe get into overthinking. We want to, in that moment, catch ourselves and recognize that perhaps we're encouraging doubt. And one of the things we want to remember when it comes to belief whatever you want to see brought forth in your imagination. Some people will interpret that as easy, and some people will interpret that as hard to bring forth. So some people who have a lot of relationship success will see financial success as something that is very hard to bring forth. And perhaps somebody who has a lot of financial success, and doesn't necessarily have to be this way, but it could be this way, may see relationship success as being very hard to bring forth. All of that is based on their interpretations. So their interpretations is molding their experience based on what they believe. So things are both easier and hard based on belief via the natural self. So this has nothing to do with the spiritual self. The spiritual self is one of faith. It does not see things as easy or hard. Those are the interpretations, the beliefs formed via the natural experience, the natural self, via the information that we have been consuming whether it be traditional information like people talking to us and sharing or books or information that's presented to us from different sources of information or life experience. It's the interpretation that we are forming that says easy or hard. And we can change the interpretation. So we're going to look at now five sensory integration into six sense, which is what I'm going to be further talking about over the videos to come which may seem on the surface like an abstract concept, but we're starting to understand it even more so as we go through these experiences, that it makes a lot of sense. There is a spiritual true self, who you're destined to be, which speaks to you from desire. And you can go even deeper into the divine realm if you want and understand it even deeper, but we're not going to go there. And then there's even the natural identity that is formed through life experience. We want to merge them and see them as one. And we call this five sensory to six sense integration. If you have a goal, and the way we do this is to work with faith and belief. And we're going to look at it from three perspectives. Creative law and natural law, spiritual self and natural self, six sense and the five senses. So Neville states, if you have a goal, although it is unseen, it already exists. Now that is how we further ascend and transcend past the limiting doubt-based interpretations. Your normal mortal eye cannot see it, but by rearranging the structure of your mind, you can see it clearly. Rearranging the structure of the mind happens automatically through faith and consciously through evolving the beliefs, and you can do a combination that resonates with you till it is rearranged to reflect 
and see with the mortal eye the vision in your experiences via the five senses. If as the days follow one another, you remain loyal to this unseen reality, he says, and your goal is reached, you will have discovered the mystery of creation. So we're working with the laws of creation and aligning it with the natural laws. They are not in conflict. They're actually in harmony. To further integrate this, let's talk about another quote that I brought up from the book, The Kabbalion, in which it was stated, the hermetic teachings concerning the process of the mental creation of the universe, and at the beginning of the creative cycle, the all in its aspects of being projects its will toward the aspects of becoming and the process of creation begins. So it's happening from within and externalizing outward. So we want to find what we desire from within and be guided from within to the end result. This process, as it is stated, is called the stage of involution in which the all becomes involved or wrapped up in its creation. This process is believed by the Hermeticists to have a correspondence to the mental process of an artist, writer, or inventor who becomes so wrapped up in his mental creation as to almost forget his own existence and who for the time being almost lives in his creation. So we call this being in the zone, being in the now, being in flow, or being autotelic, or as referred to here in the Kabbalion, the stage of involution. One with five sensory experience and six sense, one with and not seeing the experience as stressful and frustrating in relation to your vision. Now, this is based also on the principle of correspondence from the Kabbalion. Let's talk about this, which is related to inner world interpretation, outer world expression, inner world impression on the subconscious mind via imagination, and outer world externalization of that vision. So as stated, the principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. There are planes beyond knowing, or our current level of understanding, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. Now, I call this inner interpretation, or understanding the world of natural law, which is the outer world, based on understanding your inner, infinite world within. Going into the world of the divine and understanding it to a level of depth. We want to ascend further into a deeper level of understanding via the world within. This journey happens as you build a deeper connection via meditation, via inner voice conversation, and otherwise referred to as the inner work. The ancient Hermeticists considered this principle of correspondence as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown. Now, another way of looking at this is that the creative law within is being expressed outwards as the natural law and all we have to do is understand the source of it all from within and we'll be able to accurately interpret the outer world experiences. Now, from there, we'll be able to also interpret what information we are, you could say, getting from the outer world and seeing what is actually in alignment towards the vision. And we call this discernment. Wisdom is said to know the difference. Now, that stated, another way of looking at that is what James Allen referred to in The Heavenly Life. He said, man evolves outward to the periphery of complexity and then evolves back to the central simplicity. When a man discovers that it is mathematically impossible for him to know the universe before knowing himself, he then starts upon the way which leads to the original simplicity. He begins to unfold from within, and as he unfolds himself, he enfolds the universe. So we become at peace and at harmony because we understand more so each day the source of our experiences.
I call this cause and effect reflection, which I borrowed from the principle of correspondence. Now, it's the understanding in summary, five senses, natural world, sixth sense, inner world, creative law, bringing them together in harmony by A, staying committed to the vision, number two, seeing it all the way to completion, and number three, finding any disempowering interpretations that we have from within in relation to ourselves, in relation to our vision, in relation to people, environment, circumstance, information, and changing it to build a further relationship to the inner world, and then from there, further related to the outer world. Now, this also, as a result, helps us understand more this spiritual self or fourth dimensional self and relate it back to the natural self, our natural existence here. So Neville stated in one of his lectures, instead of being a three-dimensional sense man using a fourth dimensional power, I am now identified with the fourth dimensional power using a three-dimensional sense man as an instrument. So the body is the instrument of the mind. So this is a personalized journey that we go through, understanding this more so, and simply put, brings us into a higher level of self-confidence. And by self-confidence, we can refer to it as confidence in the true self. So we can say, actually replace the word self-confidence with true self-confidence or spiritual self-confidence. So this also helps us further understand the power of imagination, which is then a further integration of the sixth sense, which includes imagination, and the five senses interpreting from imagination. As Neville stated, all change takes place in consciousness. The future, although prepared in every detail in advance, has several outcomes. At any moment of our lives, we have before us the choice of which of the several futures we will choose. And as we mold our journey towards the success, we recognize that the interpretations that show up are based on what we are imagining within, what we are filling up our consciousness with. We can further reflect upon this quote and recognize that we can consciously choose the pathway to the fulfillment. So that stated, we recognize that what we are selecting in our imagination exists in the infinite world of possibility, and we maintain a higher degree of faith, and we couple that through the evolution of our beliefs or lifting up our thoughts, as James Allen had once referred to in his book, As a Man Thinketh, to bring us into a higher degree of faith in the vision. Now, as a result, we're able to feel more connected or the stage of involution on the journey, one with the journey. We don't feel overwhelmed by any complexity that shows up. We're able to integrate natural law with creative law. We're able to integrate the natural self, the physical self, with the spiritual self. And we feel one with, and we understand this concept even more so, which is integrating the sixth sense with the five senses. Now, this, as we're discussing it, upon reflection, came from reading, and I'm paraphrasing here, a quote from Thinking Grow Rich back in 2004, in which he said that the sixth sense, or infinite intelligence, and any of those we would consider more abstract concepts, can only really be understood by following the previous principles. Now, I believed it. Whether it is true or not, I believed it. And because I believed it and followed it and seen it all the way to completion, the goals at the time, I then found that I understood this information even more. And as I further go down this pathway, I recognize the importance of having a goal, seeing it all the way to completion, and after you bring forth success, do it again and again and make it a way of life. Because then, because then one of the things that I find that is most rewarding is the connection you have within, the relationship you have with the divine realm or your relationship with God and the spiritual realm. And it's an individualized experience, one that is understood by your living the philosophy. And very much related to in an epilogue to this quote here from Neville Goddard, if you have a goal, although it is unseen, it already exists. Your normal mortal eye cannot see it. But by rearranging the structure of your mind, you can see it clearly. Simply put, staying committed all the way and not giving up. If, as the days follow one another, you remain loyal to this unseen reality, 
and your goal is reached, you will have discovered the mystery of creation. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.